speaker, Dr. B. Bhavana, ma'am. Good, good afternoon, everybody. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce our speaker for today, Dr. Bhavana, ma'am. MD Homeo and MSc in Clinical Psychology, a gold medalist. She has completed her VHMS in 2006 and MD in 2010. Currently employed as Associate Professor in the Department of Materia Medica at JSPS Government Homeopathic Medical College since December 2018. She has a vast clinical experience. One few are, one of such are, She's worked as a consulting homeopathic physician at AP Homeopathic Association from September 2006 to December 2010. She has also worked as a medical officer in the Telangana State Road Transport Corporation Hospital, Hyderabad, from March 2011 to December 2018. Awarded with prestigious awards uh, like Dr. GLN Shastri Gold Medal for being the best outgoing student statewide in MD Homeo in 2010 awarded with the Professor Ramaya Gold Medal for being the best outgoing student university topper in OU region in 2005. Also awarded with Nyapati Srinivas Rao Medal for securing statewide highest marks in BHMS in 2005. She's achieved a distinction in subjects of anatomy, organon and philosophy and repertory in BHMS. Stood as the subject topper in anatomy, physiology and biochemistry, surgery, obstetrics and gynecology, homeopathic pharmacy, materia medica, organon, and repertory. Nothing is left. <laughs> Achieved distinction in practice of medicine in MD final. Stood as topper in MD final in materia medica too. She's also stood as a subject topper in man in medicine, man in health, history of medicine and biostatistics, materia medica, practice of medicine in MD homeo. Ma'am, with this, I think it's a great pleasure to have you around with us today. I also request you to please uh, take the session ahead. Today's topic that ma'am is going to take for all of us, generalized anxiety disorder, a struggle with self. Thank you. We acknowledge the presence of senior doctor and national IIHP women's cell member, Dr. Gayatri, ma'am. Thank you. A very good evening to all of you. My humble respects to all my gurus, all my teachers over here. And my humble tributes to Dr. N. V. Srinivas Rao sir, on whose name today's oration is being held. And also to Srinivas sir, who is probably the most humble person I have ever met in my life. Sir was always pious, always calm. Like I tell Sudha ma'am always, ma'am sir is always there with us. Between us, he's always guiding us. So with all his blessings and the blessings of my gurus over here, I welcome you all to this oration. So taking ahead this session, and also before we go ahead, I would like to thank the organization HMAT for giving me this opportunity. This is a place, the organization which has given me the first chance and which has kept its trust and belief in me. This is the place where I started my first practice clinical days. So you all know how special the first initial practice is. Gopal Krishna sir and other sir, everybody always believed in me gave me an opportunity long back, 15 years back to practice in this organization. So this stands a special place in my heart. So today I feel lucky to be present here and talking before you all. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. So going ahead with our topic of the day. 
generalized anxiety disorder as struggle with self. Why anxiety? We have so many clinical cases, clinical conditions. We have so many things. We have so many uh, topics to discuss. But then why only this generalized anxiety disorder have I selected? Anybody in the audience who have never faced anxiety in your life, at least once, anybody in the audience? No, I don't think there exists a human being without, anxiety, without experiencing anxiety at least once in life, at one phase, at one time. So this is the most commonest clinical condition I feel that is present with all of us. So I have decided that we had a small case in the OPD of uh, JSPS. So I thought this would be interesting to discuss with you all. This case is no special. Let me tell you, this is not a special case. This is not a case with a lot of pathological conditions and all. But still, this case tells us how important it is for us to keep our eyes and ears open, to be how sympathetic with the patients and how to arrive at the simulima. So going ahead, the next slide, please. So going ahead, we had a female patient, Mrs. A.S. She was a Muslim, actually, aged around 39 years. So she was hailing from Amberpet and she consulted our material medica department. Her only presenting complaints were slurred speech for the last 30 years. The patient is 39 years. I acknowledge the presence of G.R. Mohan, sir, my guru. Please welcome here, sir. We have just started, sir. We acknowledge the presence of our uh, past president and uh, present uh, founder director of our research wing, ICRH, and the former principal of the Deos Homeopathic Medical College and our master, Dr. G.R. Mohan, sir. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. So this was a case of slurred speech for the last 30 years. The patient is 39 years old. So right from the age of nine years, she had slurred speech, trembling of hands and legs in presence of others since 30 years. And also she used to wake up startled in the sleep right from childhood. These are the only three presenting complaints. So before we go into the details of the case, let's see how it all started. The next slide, please. We had the patient was asymptomatic till the age of five. Now at earliest age, as she joined her initial days of schooling, there were incidents of tripping down a few times while walking. So obviously in the preschool, all her friends used to make fun of her. There were a lot of moments of embarrassment which the patient had in her head for all these years. And so gradually she avoided playing with all her friends. So this was at the age of five, you just can imagine as somebody who is having this at the age of five. So going ahead, she thinks that the people make fun of her if she walk and fall. What if I fall down? So since then she's having this particular idea in her mind, what may happen if I fall down? And also the next, that led to decreased confidence levels on herself right from the age of five. I'm talking of somebody who is in the age of five. Now going ahead, next slide, yes. She used to play only with her younger sister because she had very little friends and everybody used to make fun of her. And her younger sister unfortunately died at the age and now the age of the patient was nine years old. That sister met with a fire accident. The patient did not witness the fire accident, but she still missed her sister. So they had, she had further no more company to play with. She was all alone left at the age of nine. This happened when the patient was a, at the age of nine. This incident made the parents, the parents in a conservative Muslim family, we all know, they lost one child. So they became overprotective. They were too much protective about the patient since the patient was nine years old. Now, what did, did this lead to? 
overprotective parents. Whatever the patient wanted used to come home. She was not allowed to go out. She was never allowed to go out. She was never allowed or assigned any task. And she got gradually habituated to dependency. If she wanted something, it would come home. She would never go out of the home. So this was a conservative, typical Muslim household with overprotective parents. So what did this lead to? The next one, it led to the next slide, the next one. It led to fear and nervousness to go out alone. Always it was accompanied, the patient always would be accompanied with one or other family member. Whenever she wanted to go out, it would be her mother, her father, or her sibling with her. So what happened next? The next one was marriage. Parents got her married at the early age. The husband was explained before, like this particular lady is very dependent. She doesn't go out. He was very empathetic. He was cooperative. He married her. They had a stable marriage relationships, no problems. And they find they had two children, one daughter and a son. Husband was all these years empathetic, understanding and everything. So you find a girl who is being overprotected by parents, dependent and taken care by the husband. But unfortunately, off late, the husband had an extra marital affair. So what is the impact on this, on the patient? She was crying. She was typically telling us, I can't do anything. I So she kept on weeping and she was on and off crying, but she was easily forgiving her husband. She didn't have any negative feelings for the husband. She always said, I am like this. So obviously my husband had to go to an extramarital affair. She had a lot of weeping during the case taking and this case taking has taken us a long time because of the emotional factors. So next, gradually she developed fear of meeting people, talking to people, fear of strangers, and she avoided all social gatherings of the family. She was never going out. She was all these years in the home with her parents, with her children. And her both children are extremely supportive. Husband was supportive. So she had a little contact with the society. Subsequently, a feeling that something bad might happen to her. And also that five years of complaint when she was five years old, the complaint of stumbling and falling down was always there in her mind. If I walk, what will happen? I, will, I may fall down. So till today, even when she came to the OP, she was catching hold of something or the other, not due to any neurological disorder, but due to the fear factor and the embarrassment that I may fall before people. What will others think about if I fall down? So she cannot go out till now. So what happened? The next slide. The patient was anxious, fearful, anticipation of events that might take place. Presence of people at home other than parents, even relatives, she always avoided. So she developed these are the somatic, the psyche leading to the somatic complaints. The somatic complaints of coldness of hands, these all obviously we expect in any case of anxiety, coldness of hands, perspiration. Yes, the next thing is restlessness, irritability and muscle aches with irritability. So this was a typical case of psychosomatic disorder where the patient had a lot of anxiety since childhood and gradually they landed up and ended in a physical disability. The next thing, so here to sum up, the patient needs a constant support from the children or mother. If she wants to work, she needs to have a company. She fears herself from doing anything that makes her reveal to others. And obviously she had this clumsiness of the hand, whatever she used to hold, it used to slip off. The typical, in which drug do we find this? Whatever we hold, it falls down. The typical epithmalifica, that kind of symptom, the patient had clumsiness and awkwardness of the hands. So going to the past history, yes, the next. She didn't have any significant past histories, the regular tubectomy at the age of 27, no no case, no hypertension, no diabetes and thyroid. So going to the family history, 
Yes, there was no significant family history, only that the, her father died three months back with an accident and he was hospitalized and comatose for three months, for a month, and eventually he died, but did, did not have a much bigger influence on the patient because she was always habituated to her mother and her children rather than her father. So this was simply there. Her mother is a known case of regular degenerative disorders and no other known mental illness or anxieties in the patient, in the family also. So to sum up, coming to the mental symptoms of the case, fear of meeting people, known people, unknown people, even known relatives also, anxiety, apprehension, suppresses the emotions like she was not, she was reluctant to talk about the husband, a lot of mental traumas and she was eventually crying always, forgiving in nature, yes, she says, I am like this, so he, my husband is like that. It is not his problem. There was a lot of weeping disposition and very sympathetic to the suffering of others. Why did we take this? If you all remember, there was an incident, there was a uh, rail accident in Greece three months back in the month of March, early March, where uh, a lot of people died in Greece due to the train accident. So when that flashed in the news, she was like continuously for a week, the patient did not sleep. She was always telling her daughter why so many people have been hurt, why so many people have been dying. She was extremely sympathetic to the suffering of others. So we have taken this mental symptom. Coming to the physicals, nothing very significant. Intolerance to hunger was there. Desire for a lot of things like sweets and chocolates, no specific aversions. Thirst, less patient. The patient was absolutely, completely thirstless, only drinks very little water whenever required. So bubbles were regular and there was no problem with her urination. The next, coming to the perspiration, only when she's anxious, the patient used to get cold perspiration on the hands, sleeps with legs outside the blanket and prefers to sleep on the side. Repeated dreams of cats. She had a small pet cat, which eventually died. So that cat used to recur in her dreams. And we have taken that and extremely hot patient cannot bear any kind of covering needs, always fat and the AC. Intolerant to warm weather. Habit of tea drinking. Yes, the next one. So insignificant female uh, uh, history or menarche was normal, regular at the age of 12 years, regular cycle, glycoria, only two to three days before menses, which is common and physiological, glycoria. So two pregnancies with full term, normal deliveries. When we go to the general physical makeup, moderately built, so Physically, we find an absolutely normal patient. Even her systemic examination in the next slide, her vitals were normal. In the next slide, we can see the systemic examination. Yes, if you see the CNS examination, there was a lot of trembling. Yes, it was there, but the higher functions were normal. The speech, there was a desire of speech whenever the patient was anxious. Otherwise, no, the speech was absolutely normal. All the cranial nerve examination was normal. The sensory system like the touch, the pain, the vibration, we have done everything to rule out a neurological disorder. Everything was normal. Coming to the motor system, the reflexes, everything was normal. Coordination was normal, but there was an involuntary movement whenever the patient was anxious. This did not have any significant neurological deficit. Even the cerebellar symptoms, like the rhombus was absent, the hypotonia, the tone of the buzzes was normal, everything. There were no cerebellar symptoms in the patient. Coming to the autonomic dysfunction, yes, increased perspiration whenever the patient was anxious. So when we come to the end of this case, there was absolutely no physical disability in the patient. There was no absolute wrong or nothing very markedly morbid in the clinical examination. So we have given the provisional diagnosis of generalized anxiety disorder and the differential diagnosis, of course, the panic disorder, the hypothyroidism 
for hyperthyroidism, which has a lot of tremors and also the Parkinson's were considered. But eventually, the clinical diagnosis, here's the next. So generalized anxiety disorder. We stop here and we will have first a look at what this generalized anxiety disorder is. So this anxiety often gives a small thing a big shadow. As I told you, there is rarely a person in this audience who have never experienced anxiety. So for small things, we worry a lot. Small things give a big shadow. Small things, what may happen? What next? What to do next? What will happen tomorrow? The next event, the next exam. For every age group, there is an anxiety. So living with anxiety is like being followed by a voice which is always pulling you back. But let me tell you, the psychologists all over the world say that anxiety is our positive motivator. If there was no anxiety, we would not be motivated to take up new tasks. So the positive side of anxiety is it is always pushing us to go front at the same time. That's the reason I have given the caption of a struggle with self. Anxiety doesn't come without, it comes from within us to hamper all our condition. So look at the incidence of this disease. The next slide, look at this. The National Mental Health Survey conducted in the last five years identified anxiety that one in every seven Indians suffer from some sort of anxiety disorder or depressive disorder in their lifetime. And also, Nearly 38 million Indians are diagnosed with anxiety disorder per annum. We have a lot of stress from day one, from the morning till evening. So owing to our changing and the stressful pattern, we, the number is like to be doubled over the next decade. This is a very sad news for all of us. So the onus is on us as homeopaths to take care of these kind of anxiety disorder. So the ICD classification, yes, anxiety, the next. So these are the different types of anxiety, the generalized anxiety, which is continuously there. It is not present in a particular situation. It is called as generalized anxiety. That is, it is pre-floating, they say. Generalized anxiety happens to everyone. But when it is persistent in a patient, we label them as generalized anxiety disorder. There are different types, as you can see in the picture. I am sure all of you might be knowing this. Panic disorder, specific phobia disorder, separation anxiety disorders, agoraphobia. Agoraphobia is nothing but people are scared of entering places where they cannot escape from, like the lifts. These people don't get into the lift because if they get into the lift, they have a fear that they may be trapped in the lift. And then again, you have a social anxiety disorder. So among all these, our case is coming under the class of generalized anxiety disorder, where any condition, any situation of anxiety is leading to physical symptoms in the patient. So let's come back to our case and see what the totality is we have taken. Yes, so anticipation of bad things happening, fear of strangers, history of embarrassment, she used to fall down, I told you, sympathetic to other sufferings, weeping, and then suppressed emotion, thirstless patients, profuse anxiety from, profuse perspiration from anxiety, and a hot patient, desires for cold air and chocolates, dreams of dead animals, and finally the trembling of extremities with anxiety. So any guess what the remedy might be, what our repertorial result might be? The next slide will show you the repertory chart. Yes, the next slide. Obviously, as you all might have guessed, we have got pulsatilla as a drug in our repertorization chart, you can see pulse, sepia, and sulfur were the leading remedies. So now we have a hot patient, a thirstless patient who is very anxious, but the question is, is the patient a typical pulsatilla patient? Yes, the patient was a typical yielding patient, weeping, she was always adjusting, she was thirstless, hot patient, no doubt of pulse being the remedy of choice. But 
if you see the next slide, the repertorial result, pulse, sepia, and sulfur were leading. Here, we come to a point where do we always give the remedy that has come in repertorization? When we went back and saw the case, yes, this is a true case of pulse defense. But somewhere in our mind, somewhere in the mind, we had that, is the trembling so much in pulsatilla? Is there so much of perspiration in pulse? Is pulse our remedy for this generalized anxiety? So if we see, here I would like to quote in the next slide, I would like to quote that Cromden Burnett has beautifully said that this you will find in the preface of Boric Materia Medica. In the preface of Boric Materia Medica, we find that the fact is we need any and every way of finding the right remedy. The first one, the simple simile. The simple simile is nothing but what we get after repertorization. The simple similar remedy, that is pulsadilla in this case. Or we can definitely think of a simple symptomatic similimum where we can consider what are all the symptoms in the case and what is the remedy we get. Simply, it is like a matching. You, you match the symptoms and you match the drug. The third option is the pathological similimum. So what do we do in this case? Do we go for the simple simile or for the simple symptomatic similimum? We just had a general uh, implication in the mind that why don't we try a remedy that is more symptomatically indicated and then come back to our pulsatilla. Our pulsatilla, our constitutional medicine is always there. So let us give our remedy which is symptomatically suiting to the patient first. So obviously our remedy being prescribed is we had a thought of Argentum nitricum. Yes, the next so the remedy prescribed in this case was not pulse. We have given her Argentum nitricum. See, Argentum nitricum, if we go to the next slide, I would like to bring upon, in George Bithalcos, Essence of Materia Medica, he very beautifully describes Argentum nitricum, where weakness of the mental sphere, which is most obvious, whenever a challenge appears, Unless and until the challenge appears, you find an absolutely normal Argentum nitricum patient. Then the next, the patient's Argentum nitricum always starts thinking, what might have happened? What if I go there and if I fall down? What if people will laugh at me? And also Argentum nitricum is a drug for social anxieties is what Vithalkos describes. They have an overwhelming fear and anxiety of public and strangers. As you all know, in our materia medica, Argentum nitricum, whenever see the nervous diarrhea, before performance, there is a diarrhea always. The patient is always skeptical about this performance. So social and performance anxieties are leading. There are a lot of questions in Argentum nitricum, mind always. How shall I cope with it? What am I going to do next? What next? Shall I make a fool of myself? Will everybody laugh at myself? Yes, these are all very beautifully described under George Vithalcos Argentum Nitricum. So now if we think of this case of the lady, if you see all of these were present in the woman, everything, every single symptom was there in the patient. Along with the physical complaint of tremors and palpitation with anxieties. So we thought rather than pulsadilla, why not we give Argentum nitricum and then we always have pulse to fall back. Pulse was constitutional. So let's give Argentum. Then if she if she's not relieved, let us see how it works. And then we thought we'll go for pulse. So here I would like to bring upon a small topic on Beck anxiety inventory. As many students are here, for whatever we, we for whatever case we take. There should be an indicator. Good evening, sir. I acknowledge the presence of Janardhan, sir.
Good evening, sir. A humble pronoun from my side and all of our audience. So coming back to the case, in every case, we need to have a protocol, a particular scale to measure whatever disease we are treating with. So this is one back anxiety inventory BAI. It measures anxiety in patients with a focus on somatic symptoms of anxiety, not only the mental symptom, but also the somatic symptoms. So it always helps us in discriminating anxiety and depression and assessment of symptoms such as nervousness, dizziness, and inability to relax. So in this case, we have used BAI scale, the next one. So the BAI is nothing but a questionnaire. It has got 21 items that you can see in the figure, like numbness, like feeling hot. These are all the somatic symptoms of anxiety. The patients are given this questionnaire and the responses are being recorded. So you can grade them from 0 to 3 is very severe. So finally, when we add up the score, it is 0 to 9, normal or no anxiety, mild anxiety, moderate and severe. This is the indicator of anxiety we have considered. In this case, in the beginning, we have done it at every follow-up of the case. We had tried to give the patient a questionnaire and we have tried to analyze it statistically, how far is the anxiety being reduced. So let's see what happened in this case. The next slide. So on 3rd March, when the patient first came, there was anxiety, trembling of the hands, anticipation, yes. We have given Argentum, Nitrigum, three doses. And as you all can see, the Beck Anxiety Inventory score was 42. She was graded under severe anxiety when she initially came to the hospital. Eventually, the next follow-up, on 24th March, she was better by 20%. And her anticipation has reduced. So we have given her Argentum Nitricum 1M, 1 dose. And you can see the scale showing it as 36. Now I would apologize here. We don't have the first initial video of the patient. But this video which I'm going to show you is the second follow. -up. After giving Argentum Nitricum 200 free dose. Look at the patient, the date. Yes, yes you can play it. The volume. Can we get the volume? Okay, I'll put it here. No. Okay. No. Okay, fine. So I'll tell you what the patient is explaining. Get that, no? Here the patient is explaining that she had a lot of trembling of hands and uh, a lot of stammering speech, blurred speech. I'll tell you what she did. She was saying that uh, now can you go out? After Argentum Nitricum, 203 doses. We asked her, can you go out alone? She said, yes, I now try to go out I now try to go out alone and my trembling in the hands has reduced and even you can skip it. No problem. So the next slide. On 6th April, the next subsequent visit, we have put her on Rubra and her BAI score, if you can see, was 29 at this time. So initially, we had a BAI of 42, then coming to 36. And subsequently, now it was 29. Here also you have a video of the patient. Yes, she was able to walk. Here the milestone was, she went to her daughter and said that, you don't need to come with me to the hospital. I will go alone. The lady who was afraid to go out of house, even to the local shop, was now after Argentum Nitricum 1M within a span of 40 days. She said to her daughter, you don't need to come with me. I will go to the hospital myself, show to the doctor and come. So we were very happy at this time. The next slide. 
you have a video here showing her walking. She was able to walk without stumbling, without, uh, I'm not sure the audio is not playing, but that's fine. So she was telling us, she was showing her hand, she was telling, Isse pehle bahut kam ta tha, abhi kuch nahi hai. Har khadana kam ho gaya mera. Abhi mein bahar ja sakti hu, apna kam kar sakti hu. You can see, no, yes, you can see here. Can you go to uh, one minute? Can you fast forward the video to the end? Oh, yes, you can see here the way she's walking now without any support. Initially, she, with a lot of anxiety, she was very anxious to come to the hospital to walk and show us also. But now she was comfortable. She was showing everything. The next visit, the next slide, the last visit we had 10 days back, 19th May, where here the patient said, I went to a marriage. I put the garland on the groom's uh, this thing and everything. I have done everything without any anxiety. But only when the videographer put the light on me, I had my trembling. I still have it, but I am much better. I am attending all the social gatherings. And at this point of time, the patient told us dimness of vision improved. We were we were worried. You didn't mention dimness of vision all these time, all these for long. So suddenly dimness of vision improved. We were thinking, what is this a clinical symptom of argentum nitricum? No. Refer boring. In boring mathematica, they give you argentum nitricum improves the power of the weakened ciliary muscles. Yes, it is there in boring. So we went back and referred. Yes, argentum nitricum was definitely working. The patient was physically better. Was mentally better, a lot of anxiety is coming back. And you can see the next video, you can see the expressions of the patient also, if you can't hear her. She was very comfortably talking. No problem, no when the video class was over, I was trembling a bit. Otherwise, other time, no anxiety and all. So now it was still there. We had given her Argentum Nitricum 10 M1 after B 201 M. And now on 19, we have given her Argentum Nitricum. She's showing her hands if you can see. No trembling, no tremors, nothing. She's now describing that video grammar's incident. So going ahead, the next slide is so. So bringing back the smiles. We were very happy looking at the smile of the patient who was very anxious all these days. Now was comfortable, was smiling, was talking to her. Now we have, according to BAI, we have monitored the chart. Initially, it was 42, the BAI score, the anxiety score, which was severe anxiety. And now on 19th, it, was, it has come down to 10, which is graded under mild anxiety. So the patient is still under treatment on argentum nitricum 10 m so we are awaiting the result what next so this is not the final conclusion so why this is how only simple argentum nitricum are remedy which we have given on the symptom basis only we have not considered the repertorization the constitutional nothing we have given it on the symptom basis so do you have any other drugs for anxiety? Yes, of course, our Medina Medica is full of drugs for anxiety. Yes, the next slide. If we discuss, we have Econite. You all know the famous drug for anxiety, fear of death, the clairvoyance, where the patient predicts the time and the day of death. This most of you know. And a panic attack that is coming suddenly. This voice is most modern, indicated in Econite. When it comes sudden, that is what I tell all my students. Identify Econite by its suddenness and acuteness. That is what Econite is for. And the fear of death, of course. Coming to the next famous and favorite drug, Ethusa Therapia, which most of the students use before exams. It is one remedy for examination punk or examination fear. But Ethusa has a lot of delirium in their mind. Delirium as this a cat is running, a rat is running under and always remember, identify Ethusa by its thirst, absence of thirst. 
Tipping are very important in acute time given for all anxious cases. Absence of thirst and always a drug for examination part. The next drug, what is the drug that always feel? What if others will notice? Yes. Good evening, sir. We acknowledge the presence of Gopal and uh, Gopal Chari, sir. We acknowledge the presence of our great leader, the Umayapati Mutupita, Dr. Samudra Vedukopala Charigaru, Chairman, Telangana Irrigation Development Corporation. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for raising this occasion. So we go to the next remedy, the calcarea cap. You all know what calcarea is about. Any mental anxiety leading to what may others think? What if others notice my anxiety? This drug is full of it. And they are calcareas are known to be most indolent and very slow in their reactions and response. Very indolent, very slow in doing all the actions in initiating all the actions. And anxious that others will notice their mental confusion. We had a case where this patient was telling, even in this case also, what if somebody identified my mental state? So calcarea is always giving importance to others. What will others think? What will they think? What will he think? This is what is the mindset of calcarea. And we have this least mental exertion leading to return of the menstrual flow in calcarea. This anxiety goes deep down in calcarea where they have a lot of anxiety about family, and friends, and that eventually leads to irregular menstruation. Irregular menses are very common in your calculator. Coming to the next famous examination pump remedy, what that? Gelsenium. After refuta, you have gelsenium. In this case also of argentum nitricum, gelsenium was a close competitor. This gelsenium is having a lot of situational stress and anxieties. It is mostly used in panic disorders and also phobias, where there is a lot of examination path and a lot of physical symptoms of tremors. But gels is more of motor paralysis and motor weakness and incoordination of muscles. Argentum nitricum is more of neurological, gelsenium is more of neuromuscular what we see. Yes, here, after this, I would like to bring upon a notice of all of you. There was a, this is very interesting to look at. There was a randomized double blind clinical trial, which was published in National Library of Medicine Center for Biotechnology Information. Here, they have taken rats or mice, what we know, as an experimental animal. And they have injected this gelsenium potent as diluted drug in the rats. To just observe what happened in the rat. We all know that if a rat is left in a new chamber or in a new situation, it always goes and runs in the corners. Rats are known to identify and mark their boundaries first, all the rats. So what happened in this experimental setup was, when gelsenium was given to the rats, they shan't going on to the corner. They were exploring the situation and the chamber. The rat, the experimental rat, were running down all the chamber. So it has been concluded that an improvement in exploratory behavior and diminution of thigmotaxis. What is thigmotaxis? Is fear of being touched by something which is unknown. Thigmotaxis and neophobia. Neophobia is a fear of new things. This is one reason we give gelsemium for people who are afraid of new things. They always want a regular setups. They don't want to get into new things, new situations, new functions, new performance and everything. So here, this is very interesting to know that gelsemium even acted in lower animals and so similar, we give gelsemium for examination pump and all such kind of animals. So going to the next, that is lycopodium. You all know lycopodium. The one word that describes lyco is 
enfeeblement enfeeble is nothing but extremely weak mental as well as physical lyco is weak mentally as well as physically like arsenic we describe physically very restless mentally being very very restless and also physical very prostrated in arsenic but lyco is enfeebled universally mentally and physically lyco has stage fear performance anxiety you know that before as the people who are regularly accustomed to any kind of lawyers public speakers these all have performance anxiety once they start performing they are comfortable with it that is what is like to happen the next drug the most important is your arsenic and fear of that you all know arsenic differentiated from aconite by its aconite is clear point aconite identifies the date and time of death whereas arsenic is universally having the fear of death hopelessness and despair driving him from place to place it is one of the drugs for restlessness along with aconite and rustox the trio of restlessness aconite acts and rustox so mental restlessness with physical prostration these are only a few remedies i have tried to put on along with a uh, gentle nitric or a few remedies that come for anxiety the last remedy that is silesia we will discuss silesia and so so sensitive dread of failure here in kent can say that silesia is more given for great fag in professional people like men students lawyers clergymen kent has quoted this i have never been myself since that particular case since that particular incident it has changed me the anxiety has come into me after that particular incident e silesia about so it is for anxiety in professional field so finally coming up so we have seen how argentum nitricum in gradual doses and in this case here after at the end of the discussion i would like to print to your notice the ccrh the next slide the ccrh has given something like good clinical practice there is need to time and again revive our art of case taking we all get cases but as students and as uh, clinicians we need to ensure that the data is scientifically authentic that is the reason we have always taken a scale we have identified what are the indicators statistical numbers can never go wrong yes you always have to have a scientifically authentic data and as a clinician i would advise all the juniors the homeopaths here to record and document all the cases whatever you see now this case we had a video so when a video is there when you are seeing somebody being treated with a drug it always gives you inspiration to your future generations and you can get them published we can talk to the world this is our work so all the clinical data needs to be accurately documented and preserved as well so the onus is on us to identify and address each case as a novel one each case is a new case each anxiety case is has an individual drug some go for lyco some go for silesia some some are treated with simple arsenic also so individual novel and challenge so coming to the conclusion of my session homeopathy is an expansive progressive it is ever and ever day in and day out be increased like in the uh, constant and herring says that drugs are being prepared from every other substance we have drugs from right from the soil from the sand that is the silesia we have drugs from imponderable sources the x ray so there are there are so many material in this world from which the drugs are prepared so herring says homeopathy is a science that has already fostered that is developed and it's still developing every day new drugs are being added you have a lot of scope with our remedy not one remedy we cannot say that every case of anxiety we can treat with argentum nitric acid no. your case may be different your case silesia may be indicated your case arsenic may be indicated identify the drug identify new drug this time the ever evolving so this last sentence is very very uh, 
very very touching actually homeopathy is essentially not many sided it is all sided this is what Henry said it is all sided you can treat the patient mental illness physical illness spiritual illness any kind of illness any kind of case that comes to you has a remedy every matter every material a remedy is prepared from it you ask for it you have one so such is our vast scope we can never say that i good evening sir so we acknowledge the presence of Shivshankar, sir. So coming to the conclusion, homeopathy is essentially not many-sided, but it is all-sided. We have drug from many sources, from many matters, and we can treat as many cases as possible, irrespective of the diagnosis. So I thank you all for the patient listening. And this is what I don't say that this was the only remedy indicated in this case. You might have come up with many remedies, but this case was an eye-opener. We have got back the smile on the patient's face that was worth millions. She was very confident. She was talking back like a normal human being with her struggle. So she has come out of the struggle and I wanted to share this case with you all. So thank you for your patient hearing and I once again thank the organizer for giving me this opportunity to speak in front of you all. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your enlightening presentation and detailed note on what generalized anxiety disorder is. We are pleased to hear your experience in these type of cases. Now I call upon Dr. G. Janardhan Reddy, sir, for your expert opinion on these type of cases. Dear friends, my my teacher, Shivashankar sir, Dr. Venugopal Achari, and principals of various colleges, dignitaries, presidents. So there are all senior doctors sitting here. I've heard the speech of Dr. Bhavana. Since she's a teacher, she was emphasizing certain things and very good. But uh, why this anxiety is common among the human being? Anxiety is not a disorder, basically, unless it is magnified. Anxiety disorder is not a wrong word. But it doesn't mean that uh, if you should not, sometimes with anxiety only you work and you come up. Why one develops anxiety? Because of the desire. When desire is unfulfilled, you develop fear. Anxiety and fear, both are twins. So what is the desire? You may have desire for many things. And most of the desires are not fulfilled. If you don't have any desire, you will not have anxiety. And you need not listen to these topics. But unfortunately, as a human being, we have got anxiety. The first and foremost remedy to do magic with anxiety is Econite. So the reason for anxiety in Econite is the pain. There will be severe pain 
where he feels he's going to die. So pain causing anxiety with fear of death is the aconite. It may be chest pain or heart pain or pain in the kidneys. Pain in the pot is not important. Where that pain makes him to feel that he's going to die, it is aconite. Then, as our Dr. Bhavana was telling, Argentum nitricum, nothing to beat. For 60% of my patients give Argentum nitricum. Argentum nitricum speciality is, he always magnifies things. A little, a small thing. Suppose he has to go to airport. So he goes there, for, instead of going two to three hours early, he goes six hours early, eight hours early. If you ask him the reason for, he says, there may be traffic jam, there may be rain, there may be some accident. So I won't go there early. So it is unusual, unnecessary, usually unexpected anxiety. Usually when you analyze yourself, you are reasonable. And the most important part of the Argentum nitricum, which is not stated in the textbook of Materia Medica is, Dr. Bhavana, where is she? Yeah, yeah you are here. Why, oh, I have seen you. It is, he is superstitious. This word is not mentioned in any Materia Medica. What is superstition? You have a strong belief system. Suppose, I come from right side to the dash. My speech is being appreciated. I always come from right. If for once I come from left side, if you appreciate, I come from only left side. So he has got strong belief system. That is the basic problem of Argentum metricum. He is, breaks, but he doesn't bend. He, whatever he feels right, it is right. Whatever he feels wrong, it is wrong. Other day I have read one article where he's a big doctor. He has seen all the doctors in USA. And finally, somebody suggested homeopathy and he was cured. This was, I think, disc prolapse. And he says, I feel to have the pain instead of getting cured by Argentum nitri, I mean your homeopathy, because I don't believe in homeopathy. In spite of getting cured, you are selling. So they're very rigid in their opinions. They are not flexible. So craving for sweets. Argentum nitricum, one thing to confirm finally. Which side you sleep? He sleeps only on left side. If he is forced to sleep on right side, he will not get the sleep. That's number one. Number two, do you have fear of heights? He says, yeah. And he cannot go on roller coasters. He cannot go on escalators. You must have seen in the airports, people carrying heavy bags and walking on the steps. They don't take escalator. And of course, even they feel claustrophobic, fear of the closed or narrow places and high places. So there were so many problems. And this anxiety neurosis can produce any disease, any symptom, even backache or impotency, root headache. For 60% of the migraine patients, I prescribe Argentum nitricum. For 60% of the backache patients, I prescribe natrium, I mean Argentum nitricum. And also for impotency, for what not. So Argentum nitricum is like a Ganesha for Ganesha when you say Om Ganesha Hai Namaha when you pray. For all anxiety patients, the basic remedy which comes to mind is Argentum nitricum. Then comes Arsenicum album. It's just simply you can differentiate. Argentum nitricum is focused about his family. He's always he will be monitoring where the family members are and how they are. Arsenicum album is concerned about himself. So anxiety, restlessness, fear of death, frustration, 
so like that so you must know the basic thing arsenic album has got fear of death you see who is not having fear of death here every small thing there is a small say you say eruption he thinks it may be a cancer then he develops fear of death any small symptom he considers as a symptom of incurable disease hence he feels is going to die that's why with or without our knowledge most of the patients are prescribed argentum nitric i mean arsenic amalgam and it relieves then comes aramet aramet is such a patient of anxiety you and i as a physician we do not know because he is a syphilitic fellow he doesn't reveal what is in mind he is very ambitious when is he doesn't get his desired object maybe lover or passing in the examination or money or whatever it is he simply he feels is useless and he tries to commit suicide uh, because he can't tolerate that anxiety so anxiety leads to committing suicide pain leads to anxiety and anxiety due to self illness anxiety due to sickness of the members you see anxiety this is varying from drug to drug then becomes calcarea core always he gets evil thoughts i am going to deliver a lecture i am sure that my lecture will not be appreciated by anybody profuse sweats any person having profuse sweats anywhere in the body continuously is a patient of anxiety neurosis arsenic amalgam has got dry cold hands profuse sweating of the hands alternates with dryness of the hands with cracks is silica cold damp hands is a parcel by shaking i can say this is your remedy there are many drugs so having the perspiration so on the head or over the body often superspiration cold perspiration warm hands dry hands so there are there are many things because time is only 10 minutes the best remedy with anxiety with palpitation of the heart any disease of the heart number one remedy is kali ors second remedy is arsenic amalgam so palpitation of the heart fear leads to palpitation kali ors this is with four four marks followed by arsenic amalgam then sorinum again when calcarea carb is followed by sorinum profuse sweats evil forebodings evil thoughts he cannot take up any position in the society he will be always number 2 he cannot be president he wants to be president, vice president he cannot be general secretary next to general secretary so number 2 position he always prefers number 2 position but he can't be number 1 then becomes phosphorus phosphorus has got anxiety not to lose i mean lose his friends always his focus is on society he is having hypocrisy this is the word which you find in repertory with four marks hypocrisy because friend may commit any mistakes he will go on supporting him he doesn't want to lose him friend may say, scold him beat him he wants to please him that is phosphorus so anxiety not to lose friends is phosphorus then nakswamika anxiety to get work done by any means by anybody by scolding beating or anger or by anything he has got anxiety he is a, a, a workaholic like arsenic amalgam then comes nitric acid he has got morbid fear of anything morbid fear of cholera what book says along with arsenic amalgam why nitric acid anxiety is not known to as is because he is a psychotic fellow psychotic people syphilitic people they don't express as soric people just like sorinum arsenicum album aconite and calcarea with these few things 
I congratulate Dr. Bhavana for her confident speak, speech, and I thank you all for listening to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now I call upon Dr. Venugopal Gaudi, sir, for the concluding remarks. Pranams to my seniors, my guru, uh, Dr. Siv Shankar, sir, president of the of, uh, association, Dr. Gopal Krishna, sir, past president uh, J.R. Mohan, sir, uh, the uh, chief guest of this evening, uh, Shri Dr. Venugopal Chari, sir, and uh, the orator and uh, the guru of Materia Medica of our country. And we can say Vishwaguru because very soon we'll uh, occupy many lands uh, with Materia Medica in the days to come as far as healthcare is concerned. So uh, uh, it's a great opportunity my association has given me to give a few words about Dr. Bhavna's speech, but I'm more carried, of course, it's a beautiful oration Dr. Bhavna has given, but I'm just carried away by Dr. Janardhan Redisar's words because uh, uh, I am the uh, Shishya of uh, Janardhan Redisar. I have never sat in his uh, class or anything, but I've heard his orations and my practice uh, I'm very happy to say it is because of the beautiful clinical tips that Janardhan Reddy sir has given over this platform for many years to come, uh, for a long time to come. Thank you so much, sir, for that beautiful words on that. And uh, as we all know, anxiety is as old as probably human civilization is concerned. And probably the first uh, case of anxiety neurosis was... Uh, uh, Arjuna going into the battlefield trying to, uh, you know, fight his cousins and uh, Lord Krishna gave him probably Argentum Nitricum with all those good words of Bhagavad Gita. So, uh, uh, Dr. Bhavna, we are happy that uh, you are uh, 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 successful uh, in your practice as a clinician, as a teacher and uh, as a part of homeopathic fraternity. And uh, what impressed me and the take home message I would like to say of uh, Dr. Bhavna's uh, words this evening were like, uh, you can have repertory telling you a remedy with so many numbers of a particular uh, case, which goes for this particular remedy, 13 by 23, but she has chosen something which goes with lesser number of uh, points as far as repertory is concerned, not Valsitila, she has gone for Argentum Nitricum. That is why homeopathy is not just a science. As such, medicine is not just a science, it's also an art. It can never be mathematics. Two plus two in homeopathy or medicine cannot be four. Do or do panch bhi ho sakte hai. And the proof of uh, today's anxiety lecture is a proof of that. So uh, she has clearly uh, said, that intuition that needs to be added as far as materia medica is concerned and the reason why you have to give a particular remedy for that uh, 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 case in concern. It is this intuition, it is the, the study of materia medica that actually helps us in treating the diseases. And you have clearly enunciated the three points, the symptom simile, the simple simile, and the symptom simile Similimum. It is you, if you put in all the uh, symptoms and uh, check, make a checkbox, it may give you a certain other remedy. But if you go with the heart of the case, not just with the mind, if you take your heart and take a remedy into concern, probably this is the best way to prescribe. So, uh, thank you, Dr. Bhavna. And we are going to launch many successful ships like you from Homeopathic Medical Association of Telangana. So you have a 18 year old story to tell about when you were a clinician and a charitable homeopathic physician here. And you have come a long way. We wish you more success in the days to come. And uh, the, a little less uh, or probably a little less ignored about uh, homeopathic remedies in the administration of uh, this thing, the back flower remedies. We give probably, as uh, Janadhan Nidhi sir said, ars arsenic al, bargentum, nitricum, uh, and all those beautiful remedies. But uh, there are certain times, for example, 
you know, there are simple symptoms that can cause call these backflow uh, remedies into uh, reckoning. For example, a, a patient who has a fear and they are unable to express what exactly is the fear that they are, go that they are going through, then if you give them Aspen and for a period of time, they recover very, very well. I'm not saying this individual of uh, our constitutional remedies, but there is a gap between uh, one prescription to the other where we want to uh, fill them with empty pills, but I fill them with backflower remedies and they do significantly well. And you have a patient who has a fear about the like lycopodium, where there is a lack of confidence. They are going for an examination tomorrow. They are well prepared, but they cannot perform well, like an ethusa maybe. Uh, but when you give them large, so a large starts with L and lycopodium starts with L. So it's a remedy that will take them long. And you have a, a patient who uh, has gone through a certain episode of uh, anxiety and they are very scared that in a similar scenario, for example, they are taking a flight and they are scared of close places and you have given them Silesia, Calcareca, Argentum Niticum and they are doing very well. But a day before the flight, they come into your clinic and say, I know I can do it, but I have a fear. I don't know. Can you give me something to help me? So in such scenarios, I give them Gentian, G-E-N-T-I-A-N. So it's, these are simple uh, one-liner prescriptions, but they help the patients a, a lot. For example, a fear of disease, fear of ill health, fear of poverty, that actually causes them anxiety. If you can uh, give them a remedy like arsenic alvin, the deeper constitutional thought, but if you can give them mimulus on the longer run, they do significantly well. So, and rock rose in, is another remedy for panic attacks. It's not easy to uh, say. And a rescue remedy is a beautiful remedy, which is a combination of many other things. They also uh, come, in, come into reckoning for prescriptions of anxiety. And I think they are uh, lesser, uh, uh, you know, talked about, but I think we should make them uh, use of them in the clinical practice and uh, help our patients better as the days go on. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for having this patient hearing. Thank you so much. We acknowledge the presence of Dr. Manoj Kuryako, sir, and Dr. A.M. Reddy, sir. Now I request Dr. G. Janardhan Reddy, sir, and other dignitaries to present the memento to our speaker, Dr. B. Bhavna, ma'am. I request of Samudrala Vengopalachari, sir, to please accompany us. Very late, good evening. And now the long-awaited 